हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू सुपर कोचिंग बाय टेक्स्ट बुक आई दिस इज वेंकटेश योर फैकल्टी फॉर ज्योग्राफी एंड यू ऑल माइट हैव ऑब्जर्व इन द न्यूज एज वेल एज इन द इन द न्यूज पेपर्स एंड ऑल रिसेंटली देर इज अ साइक्लोन बाय नेम साइक्लोन मिक जॉम राइट यू प्रोनाउंस इट एज मिक जॉम ओके सो देर इज अ साइक्लोन अबाउट इट विल डिस्कस अबाउट why this cyclone is very unusual we will discuss about how do these cyclones form what are the how do their names are given out of it and all the things a single video for you to understand about every aspect of cyclone so before any wastage of time let us see it what is this cyclone what are tropical cyclones what are the things which you associate anyone who is watching right so can you comment in the chat section what are the things which you associate with the tropical cyclones say uh, what is the moment in say tropical cyclones what are the things which come into your mind destruction right destruction there is a uh, low pressure area you can talk about winds you can talk about the heavy, heavy rainfall the power outage okay and later on somebody also said one student said once it is also about the tamarind uh, rice packets which you get during a disaster management rescue operations or rehabilitation operations right so when you are part of the government rescue and rehabilitation the thing which you provide is what it is always the what do you provide the basic food of that particular area right so usually in the southern parts of india you do provide tamarind rice that's what they associate you can also say that that is also not wrong so if you see the recent cyclone mick jom this is the path which it has followed and then it entered into india entered into the andhra pradesh coast yesterday on december 5th then as it is moving you can see this black color line is the actual path followed and the green color area is a possible area how it will start dissipating and dying that is what it is being <coughs> shown here so if you see this cyclone the cyclone mick jom and any tropical cyclone it looks like this right so so when you see a tropical cyclone it actually looks like this you can see a tropical storm circulating rotating over a low pressure area you can see a center here that is called the eye of a cyclone so what is a cyclone a cyclone is a low pressure area around which all the weather phenomena occurs okay it is a rapid rotating storm so what is a cyclone it is a rapid rotating storm with a closed isobars closed isobar means the pressure distribution so we can talk about the pressure which are closed it is a rapid rotating storm with a usually a low pressure at the center where all the winds rush into it that is what the definition of a tropical cyclone is right so you can see this this is a pictorial representation then the next thing what do you associate with a tropical cyclone as i told you winds heavy winds okay some kinds the speed of the winds can be even uh, 200 km per hour in some of the tropical cyclones the recent cyclone of mick jom which is affecting chennai and all the southern coast we have seen the flooding there the wind speed as around 110 km per hour mick jom wind speed is 110 km per hour so sometimes super cyclones you can see even around 1 2 more than 200 km per hour and you also associate a cyclonic storm with something called as storm surge what is that the storm surge what do you mean by storm surge you can see when the cyclone rush into the enters into the land when it is pushes into the land it will also push the oceanic water into the land say around uh, this cyclone mick jom has pushed the oceanic water into the land uh, say around with a height of the waves of the ocean around 1 to 1.5 meters 
1 to 1.2. What is the storm surge? I think you all know the word surge, no? Where did you see the word, hear the word surge? Uber, Ola, surge pricing, right? When they increase their prices, that is what surge. That is nothing extra, additional. A storm is surging, is additionally pushing the water of the ocean into the land and thereby it floods. You can see the GIF here. See the water, how it is flooding. So this is 1 to 1.5 meters height. Usually, you will find 6 meters height as well of some storm surges, but here it is only around 1.5. Now you see this one. So you see this cyclone, tropical migjom. It is very nearer to the coastline for so much time period of time. Why do you think it is very much unusual? Why it is unusual? The reason is, it is very close to the coast and it was very parallel, around 70 kilometers. When it is parallel to the coast, you see the system. If you have this radius, this is the radius and this would be the diameter, this would be the complete diameter and this part would be the radius, right? If you see this, you will have maximum rainfall here, but also you will have rainfall here. So it is very clear nearer to the coastline because of which Chennai received so much amount of rainfall, heavy rainfall. That is the reason why you have seen the maximum destruction. Now, if you have seen the videos in YouTube or along across the social media channels of late, you would see that there is also a, right, uh, there is also something called as what, a crocodile which was seen on the road, right. There were some of the kids who were jumping. Ah, the new swimmers are being born, yeah, kids making fun out of it, that is good, but it is a very, very uh, highly disastrous thing. It has caused severe destruction. <coughs> Luckily, because of our administration in general, in general, the management of cyclones in the last uh, uh, has increased after 1999 and uh, with the sophistication of technologies and better management. Uh, from 2000 after the National Disaster Management Act, we have seen decent success. Uh, though every life is important, the extent of death which is caused by a cyclone of this uh, intensification and this much impact, severity, you will see that the extent of death is relatively less when compared with the last 20 years, right? So the cyclones in the earlier era, in the last century, until 99, if you see that cyclone, it has it used to cause the deaths of around 10,000 people. Whereas now you see, fortunately, though the every value life is value, the death is around less than 10 because the tracks are usually understood. You have more sophistication technologies. You see, this is the picture from the Indian Meteorological Department where they are saying that observed and the forecast track. So this is the absurd and the forecast track and this is the cone of uncertainty and they continuously give the pictures at uh, every time regularly which helps us in understanding. So when you see that, why it is an unusual thing, the one of the reason is it is very nearer to the coastline. The second reason is usually the cyclones which are formed in the Indian, in the Bay of Bengal, they are formed with more intensification usually in October and November, October and November, but in the month of December, you will not fight a cyclone with such severity of around with where the winds are moving at the speed of 110 kilometers per hour. That is the rarity. Reason? We all know yeah, climate change. When there is more amount of warming of the oceans, warming of the climate around us, there is heat. That is what the unusual to. What is the two major unusual things about this cyclone? Being continuously moving along the coastline, very nearer to the coastline, which has given more amount of flooding to us and also severity of the cyclone in the month of December, right? Usually this is an unusual. Usually late October, early November is the time where you find uh, maximum intensification of cyclones in the Bay of Bengal because of accumulated heat of the months until September. But that is was not the case. This is the unique thing. And first of all, now let us come. Why they are called as tropical cyclones? What do you mean by a cyclone? If you see a cyclone, 
they are named after the coirs of a snake. You can see the coir of the snake, encircling, rotating, encircling, everything comes circular, right? So, keeping that into consideration, we have called it as cyclones. What is that? As per the coirs of a snake, because a cyclone resembles the encircling of a, we have a center, this is the eye and this is the other things. Because the cyclone resembles the coirs of a snake, where everything encircles, that is why they are called as cyclones. And why they are called as tropical? Tropical, because they are formed in the tropical oceans. What is the thing which you associate with the tropical, with the in ocean, my dear friends? Ocean. Uh, what is the thing which you associate with the word tropical? It is the high insulation, the more heat which we receive which is the reason of the heat which we receive is the most major reason why do you find that the heat whatever you receive and also once you receive the heat and all this heat is received more only in the tropical areas because of vertical rays of the sun and this insulate this heat is the reason for the development of a tropical cyclone that is the reason why they are called a tropical cyclone. By the way, we also have temperate cyclones. The extra tropical cyclones, which we call it as, that is in the Mediterranean Sea, that is the latitudes of 40 degrees, 50 degrees and all. That is different. But these are known for severe destruction with more destruction because their heat is quite, because their source of energy is this heat, which is quite high. That is found only in the tropical part. That is the uniqueness of this tropical cyclones in general. So, what will you write about tropical cyclones? So, tropical cyclones are a rapid rotating storm. Rapid rotating storm with closed isobars with around, uh, uh, what do you find? Which you find closed isobars, you will find around uh, uh, heavy rainfall, thunderstorms, more rainfall, storm surges heavy winds, torrential rains, heavy downpour, that is what you use this word, no, torrential rain, rainfall in a short period of time, but quick rainfall, downpour, that is what you call it as torrential downpour. These are the words you need to associate, right. Then let us move forward. Then, how do these tropical cyclones develop and what is their criteria of classification? When can you call it as a cyclone. See, when there is more heat, there is a low pressure area which would be developed. So, the first thing you will find is a low pressure area which would be developed. So, when there is more heat in the in the oceans, there will be heat which is there, there that because of that more insulation, more heat, there will be a low pressure area which will be developed. Once there is a low pressure area, what will happen? Winds will start entering into the center. Right? Because there is a low pressure area and the winds enter from all sides. As winds enter into the low pressure area, slowly that is where the wind speeds will be around 31 kilometers per hour. How much? 31 kilometers per hour. Then slowly, because of the amount of heat and the continuity of the amount of things and all, this will intensify. What do you mean by intensification? The low pressure area will keep on increasing. Low pressure keeps on, I mean the number decreases, that is the pressure becomes low continuously. Low pressure, lowest pressure, that is the pressure keeps on decreasing. So, for example, if you see the average pressure conditions, average pressure conditions of the air around us, it will be around 1013 millibars. 1013.4 millibars, that is the average. And you can see a typical cyclone having around the center, if you see this, this is the coir, no? You will see a low pressure area here with around, around 940 to 960 millibars. There are instances of even nearer to 900 as well, but you can see this. So, 940, 960, 980, 1000. Now, you see what is happening. The pressure is intensifying here. So, as the more the pressure increases, so once there is a heat, that low pressure area will turn into a depression. Depression will turn into a deep depression. 
and only after a deep depression it will turn into a cyclonic storm when the wind speed crosses around 62 million kilometers per hour so around 63 62 that is when you call that as a tropical cyclone until then we call them as only as depressions you might see it in the newspapers say for example open the newspapers of around uh, november 1st december uh, november november sorry Dece december 1st november 30th november 29th observe the indian meteorological department bulletins or all, all else in their bulletins they say that first there is a low pressure area which is developed in the ocean and it is developing into a storm when the wind speeds have increased further actually this migjom tropical cyclone is called as a severe cyclonic storm because the wind speed has attained has crossed around 90 kilometers per hour and it attained the speed of around 110 kilometers per hour the moment it crosses even 120 then we'll call it as very severe cyclonic storm and if it crosses 200 we call it super cyclonic storms this is very dangerous super cyclonic storms are wind speeds 200 and triple to kilometer per hour means what almost equal to the speed of a formula 1 car race the formula 1 car huh? you all might be fond of seeing that it will be more than that that is the difficulty here so when a cyclone is formed this is the idea so remember what low pressure area when there is more heat then a low pressure area is created then slowly it develops into a cyclone when there is more intensification of the low pressure area these are the big basics which you need to remember then the next one how are they named we will discuss about the technicalities of the cyclone and all how are they formed and all those kind of things i will be giving an idea of the naming before this concept of naming of the cyclone was developed you know how do you think uh, they used to identify for example there is a person by name say uh, let me take uh, my name itself venkatesh my name itself so there is a boat i am a fisherman assume so so i am going into a tropical bay of bengal and catching some fish i am a fisherman so as i am catching imagine because of a tropical cyclone my boat is destroyed my boat is destroyed and the news people have covered me then the triclone name will be called as a ah, venkatesh cyclone why venkatesh cyclone simple because the boat of venkatesh was destructed by this cyclone and people consider and remember this name with this see it is very very not so professional a very what you say there is no proper order and all and how do you raise the awareness and increase the knowledge and awareness to the public how do you bring a warning sign to the public you cannot say venkatesh cyclone no so then there is an order which was started by the government if you see the cyclones around the world their cyclones are formed across different places so the local regional network of india is this the regional specialized meteorological centers if you see this india's landmass what are the countries which are part of indian ocean which will be impacted by a cyclone if you see india bangladesh myanmar bangladesh myanmar sri lanka you can talk about pakistan you can talk about oman so like that along the indian ocean basin we have 13 countries you can see all these 13 countries here the 13 countries clearly bangladesh india iran maldives myanmar oman pakistan qatar saudi arabia sri lanka thailand united arab emirates yemen now all these countries will always create a names a list of names will be provided 13 into 13 so uh, 13 countries are there each country will give 13 names and whenever the moment a cyclone is developed say the moment deep depression will develop into a cyclonic storm that is the wind speeds crosses around 62 63 kilometers per hour immediately indian meteorological department will call that with a certain particular name say the recent cyclone migjong is named after myanmar is named after the uh, is this name is given by a country of myanmar where it is it is quite a thing migjong it names transfer strength and resilience 
So, what is MIGJOM? It stands for strength, it stands for resilience, that is strength only, strength and resilience. Quite odd, no? Huh? But that is what the thing. You have to be strong, you have to be strong. You have to be strong when there is a maximum destruction. You have to talk about the things like, you know, how to protect ourselves. You have to talk about the district management, how it can make our administrative infrastructure more resilient so that there is lesser amount of destruction. I think Indian government has a policy, no? CDRI, have you heard this? CDRI, CDRI, Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure. What do you mean by disaster resilient? Back then, the number of deaths was high. Now, you are focusing about protection of infrastructure. So, now the focus is on infrastructure protection also along with the evacuation of the people. So, disaster resilient infrastructure. You developed your infrastructure by having uh, partnerships with different countries and all so that your infrastructure becomes superior. That is the idea. And moving forward, so once a cyclone, the movement wind speeds attain 63 kilometers per hour, there is a name which is provided. Using this name, you will spread the warning signals, you will raise awareness among the public, then that will lead to protection of protection of the people. Imagine if two cyclones are formed at the same time, one in Bay of Bengal and one in the Arabian Sea at the same time. How would you organize? How would you give information and pass on to the public? A cyclone formed in the Bay of Bengal is now crossing this. A cyclone formed in Arabian Sea is crossing this. The Arabian Sea cyclone is here. Tropical cyclone, Bay of Bengal is here. No, no, no. It will be difficult to manage, no? That is when the naming was given. So, all the 13 countries will give a pre-designated names and the moment a cyclone is developed, you will give that name. Say, for example, the next cyclone, if at all, if it develops in the Indian Ocean, that is Bay of Bengal and the Arabian Sea, will be called as Rimal. You can see this, Rimal. This is a name which is given by Oman. Like that, India also given some names. You can say Tej, Gati, right? Remember the cyclones which you have remembered in the last few years. Cyclone Bipar Joy happened in this month of June 2023. You can see around last year, Sitarang, Cyclone Asani and few years here, uh, in the second uh, wave of COVID-19, 2021, Cyclone Tokte, right? So, Myanmar, Cyclone Tokte and Mijgaum, both are quite a prominent names in this uh, cycle where you have seen around uh, maximum destruction, right? That is the thing. So, these are the next few names, the next names of the cyclones. I hope you got it now, understood about the naming of the cyclones. So, it is all about <coughs> awareness. Then when you see, what are these tropical cyclones? These are tropical cyclones itself. They are known by multiple names across the world. Say, for example, across the Australia coast, they are called it as, they are called it as, say, willy willy. Willy Willy. Then in the Philippines and the Japan, the Pacific Ocean, the South China Sea region and all, we call it as typhoons. Typhoons. In the Pacific Ocean and in the Atlantic Ocean near the coast of America, we call it as, we call it as, what are they? Hurricanes, hurricanes. Uh, India, we call there very simple, no? We call it as simply as tropical cyclones, or we call them as cyclones. Uh, somebody will say in a local language, tufan, uh, right? You can say that. Remember one thing: all the cyclones occur within the tropical part. If you see this, this is the equator. So, within the range of around, oh sorry, okay, this is the thing, around 30 degrees north to 30 degrees south, 30 degrees north to 30 degrees south, you will find a tropical cyclone except around the equator. So, actually it is around 10 degrees to 30 degrees 
both the hemispheres. You will not find in the latitudes of beyond 30. Why not beyond 30? Because that is not tropical. Then that 30 degrees beyond that means there is not much heat. So, you will not find such kind of things. Then why not less than 10 degrees Celsius? Usually around 5 degrees until 5 degrees you can find sometimes. So, at least around 500 kilometers away from the equator, you will see that there is some kind of decent amount of here, what do you say, rotation which, which cyclone will rotate. That rotation is because of Coriolis force. We will discuss that. So, that is the thing, right. Moving forward, how do these cyclones develop? What are the reasons for their development? The first thing you need to understand is, the first thing about a cyclone is, you need to know about the sea surface temperatures. When the sea surface temperature of a cyclone crosses 27, is around 26.5 degrees Celsius or 27 degrees Celsius, 26.5 degrees Celsius or 27, when the ocean is having this much, only then the cyclones are developed. Remember one thing, cyclones are developed only on the oceans, never on the land. Never on land, they only develop in the oceans. Once a cyclone hits the land, it will start dissipating. The weakening of the cyclone begins. If you see today's newspapers, if you see this cyclone, you see this one. As the cyclone moves and slowly it enters into the landmass, what will happen? There is no moisture which you will get, no? So, as you can see, there is a topic here called it as landfall. Landfall. What do you mean by landfall? When a cyclone hits the, when the center of the cyclone, that is the eye, center of the cyclone, when it crosses the land, then we will call it as landfall. That means the cyclone fell on the land. From there, the weakening of the cyclone begins. So, from there around uh, uh, 6 to 8 hours, the highest and the maximum destruction of the cyclone will be stopping and slowly over a period of time, it will weaken and completely normalcy is restored. As you can see in the today's newspapers, in today's newspapers, you can see yesterday at around the coast of Andhra Pradesh, there is a place called Bapatla, Bapatla. So, in the coast of Andhra Pradesh, there, there is a landfall which happened. After crossing this Bapatla region here, as it enters into the land slowly, it will weaken. So, by tomorrow, that is December 6th, okay, or December 7th, sorry, today is December 6th, you know. By tomorrow, December 7th and all, you will see that slowly normalcy is restored in terms of the weather of the things. You will not find the dark clouds, you will not find much rainfall. There will be some kind of stormy weather even today, but by tomorrow, you will not find it. Look at Chennai now. Two days ago, the core of the cyclone, you can see here, Chennai was here. Now, Chennai is here because this has moved. It has moved. That is a thing. So, the first thing you need to understand is the sea surface temperature has to be very, very. It cannot be around uh, this amount of heating is the reason for formation. Why do you think in the recent era, the cyclones are increasing their frequency? The cyclones are increasing their intensity. Intensity. It is because of more warming of the oceans. By the way, if you see the cyclone Migjom, for how many days it was there? Uh, it started around November 1st, December uh, uh, November 30, 30th, December 1st, somewhere around the late and now. So, it is around, around 7 to 8, we can say around 6 to 7 days. Have you ever seen a cyclone which is there for more than a month? More than a one month. Unfortunately, it happened to this year. Because of climate change, there was more heat. There was a cyclone which developed at the coast of Australia and it moved towards hurricane, moved towards the African coast continuously. This cyclone was there for around 34 days. There is a cyclone by name Freddy. Freddy. This cyclone was developed for how many days? 34 days. Oh my God, huh? 34 days is quite high, isn't it? Right? 
So, 34 days about tropical cyclones, 34 days, imagine. So, why? Simple, there is no land, everything is ocean from here to here, it consistently moved. Because of that, it used to stay for 34 days, whereas here, there is a land. The moment cyclone hits the land, you will not find it. That is the uniqueness, okay. So, always understand, cyclones will develop only when there is around this. Then the next one, you would see that Coriolis force. Why do you think they rotate? You see, at the equator, there is no rotation. So, when there is more heat, that is the base, no, insulation. So, when there is more heat, there will be thunderstorms. The air will rise, convection will happen, that is it. No rotation. Air will rise, no rotation. When do you think the rotation will happen? Only when there is Coriolis force. For example, uh, imagine this is the low pressure area. Okay, you have 940 millibars of uh, low pressure, 960 millibars, 980 and 1000. Imagine so. So now what is happening? There is a pressure difference which is created from the outer with the center. So what happens? Every wind will try to enter into it. Will, I, will you agree with this? So, there is a low pressure. Winds will enter into it, right? This is how it will happen because of the pressure gradient, all the winds will try to enter, rush into it. But what happens? Because of Coriolis force, every freely moving body will deflect towards the right in the northern hemisphere and left in the southern hemisphere. Right in the north, left in the southern hemisphere. Because of these things, what happens? Because of these things, this wind which is entering, it will try to enter but will be deflected. But ultimately, the destination is the low pressure. So, it will enter like this. It will try to deflect towards the right, but destination is low pressure. Deflection towards the right, destination is the low pressure. Deflection is towards the right, destination is low pressure. Now, you see, it is wanting to enter, but it all encircles like this. As it completely encircles, look at the path which it gets. It degrades a path of anti-clockwise in the northern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, it will be the clockwise. You can see, because of these things, in the northern hemisphere, the cyclones rotate in an anti-clockwise direction, whereas in the southern hemisphere, they rotate in the clockwise direction. That is the reason why, because of this thing only, Coriolis force they are absent at the equator. Because Coriolis force is absent, tropical cyclones are also absent at equator. So, where do you think tropical cyclones are developed? Only between the latitudes of 10 degrees to 30 degrees, 30 degrees north and south. 10 degrees, because that is where Coriolis force is dominant. You see, it is not a number. The moment I say 10 degrees, do not say 9 degrees will it form. It will form. But usually, you will find more at around 10 degrees, say somewhere around 5 degrees from the equator, occasionally you can see cyclones which will be developed. So, at least we need to have around 500 kilometers in terms of distance from the equator line. From there, you will find a tropical cyclone which is developed. Then the next thing which you will observe is good source of latent heat. Where do you think the cyclone gets the energy? The cyclone gets the energy from latent heat. Right, where does it get? Latent heat. That latent heat is the source of energy. Latent heat is of the moisture. Imagine in the ocean, as a cyclone is moving, see, as a cyclone is moving in the ocean, there is air which will rise, enter into it along with water vapor. This water vapor will have hidden heat. That water vapor will convert that into uh, once again, uh, liquid cloud formation in the upper at in the atmosphere. So when that converts, there is a heat which is released. That heat is a latent heat, and this will push the air more further. Why do you think that cyclone is able to continuously do it for such period of time? Because of latent heat. The moment cyclone hits the land, there is no moisture, there is no heat. 
that because of lack of moisture that is you cannot feed the cyclone continuously because there is not much amount of moisture on the land had there been moisture on the land cyclone would have continued even on the land so hence they are not developed on the land so only after the landfall they die because latent heat is lost you know the energy is so huge that it will be around somewhere around a uh, uh, hundred hydrogen bombs whatever the energy is needed that much energy is there with respect to the tropical cyclones that is the greatness what you say that is the intensity of the cyclones i would not say greatness but that is the intensity why the administration and the management is worried because of this then you will find that there has to be no variations in the vertical wind speed why because these are local systems you cannot have variations if you have variations what will happen the system will mix you can see this picture see imagine this is one cyclone there is wind which is coming up what will happen this wind will mix with the cyclone then there is that is why the along the vertically there has to be no variations at all that's why less variations or no variations small variations these are the reasons where how a cyclone will be developed then if you see a cyclone the thing which you need to understand is the eye of a cyclone if you see the vertical structure of a cyclone eye of a cyclone you see here i it is the most calmest one around you maximum destruction is occurring you can see the eye here there is around clear sky the uh, sun is clearly visible but surrounding you everything is happening this is how the eye looks like you can see here this picture this is the eye of the cyclone where there is clear weather but around you maximum destruction <coughs> poor fishermen if they are get trapped in storms when they enter into the eye of the cyclone they assume that everything is completed no 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 because it's n circles it rotates it will once again come back the moment you come back here exactly here this is what you call it as the eye wall eye wall that is where the maximum destruction happens right so this is about the cyclones i hope you all have understood about the basics of the cyclones uh, keep watching this channel we'll be giving you the things uh come to the uh, test book app go to upsc you will see my name i'll be discussing further about the cyclones some mcqs and some new things about cyclones all the things in the test book app master class free for all of you do join until then enjoy the preparation learn about the things and this is me venkatesh signing off and before that please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video the more you like it this will be an indicator of the quality of the things thanks for watching thank you we'll see you again tomorrow एंड भी कर दिया एंड कर दिया ना वो प्रोसेस में नहीं नहीं आप क्लिक कर लिया वो डायरेक्ट इसके बाद बैक में जाएगा नहीं क्लिक कर दिया मैं ऑलरेडी एक्शन सक्सेसफुल करके नहीं आया सेकंड वाला नीचे आता है ना